Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. You can see from the last video I have got all of the lower section uh, track installed. I do have to install the raised section, the raised good yard and the incline leading up to it. That's what that pile of track is just there. Um, I'm using all of the fiddle yard for storage. So the, all the fiddle yard tracks are clear but the empty baseboard space is filled with all the stuff I need to fiddle out including all the point motors which will be part of the subject of this video. Um, control wise, I want to have my main control panel just here so I can sit on that sofa and have the main points control panel. There'll also be a little control panel resting there to control the fiddle yard. I'll be able to walk back there to use it. And then in the future, what I'm considering is so I don't have to walk around by the sofa to get control of these points down here, putting a secondary uh, control panel here. Now what's happened since the previous videos, if you've been watching along, I'll just try and steadily move the camera. Uh, this is literally just after I finished laying the track and recording that. But what I've done is screwed down this top deck here uh, firm. It was going to be removable, but I decided there's no real point as I can get through the open baseboards to get to it. And also it was slightly warped, uh, so it didn't quite meet up here. Now it's all screwed down solid. I'm much more confident that that is flush and level. What I've also done control wise is you saw some clips of this in the, it might be the track laying video. Uh, I've really badly cut a hole for the LZV100, the command station. Cut out the circuit saw in it bit, which is why there's a line going down the wood. But it's not to worry because there will be some fascia coming all the way down here with like the curve of the hill and whatever. Um, and that will be nicely cut to fit around the faceplate. Then coming out of that, we've got, sorry for the not coming out of that, we've got the handset. Um, now, I will be doing a later video, because as well as having control panels around the layout, what I'm going to have is DIN connectors uh, that fit the lens controller. So instead of plugging into the back of the base station, I'll plug into a socket that'll be here, there'll be a socket by the fiddle yard, socket in this corner, and a socket in that corner, so I can sit in that armchair and have a socket to access the layout. Uh, plug in the loco controls. For today's video, what we're going to work on is the two control panels that will be going here and over in the fiddle yard. Uh, the control panel here will be uh, just here, so it's directly in the middle of the sofa, so you can sit in either the left hand or the right hand seat of the sofa and still get access to the controls. And then the DIN socket will be right next to it, so the controller will plug in, instead of plugging into the base station, we'll plug into a socket that will be around here. Uh, now, control panel wise, in the past I've built um, I've built a lot of different variations on control panel. What I'm thinking of doing this time, I've seen it on a guy called Stephen Bennett, uh, or oh, actually Rob Bennett is the guy that makes the layout. Stephen Bennett's the name of the channel. I think that's his son's name. Um, he has lots of computer interface control. Uh, it's an American layout. It's a large layout. And he's got a lot of computer control and all that. But his control panels are really light. They're really organised. Um, and he has them on hinges. A lot of people will do this, so you can get into the back end really easy. So I quite like that idea of having it mounted flat, probably just completely vertical, because uh, if it sticks out any, I won't be able to get into the sofa. So completely vertical, but on hinges, so I can fold it out, fold it open like a book, and get all to the wiring in the back. Uh, now I have printed graphics for these. Uh, these may be temporary, I may change them, or they may last. Uh, they're laminated, so I'll just go get them and we can sit down at the baseboard and have a look. So this is going to be the main control panel here by the sofa. So as you can see, we've got the main lines and the station, which is, that's the, uh, that's those double main lines up there. And obviously this feeder and engine shed lines are just there. And then we also have the branch line point. That point is over there just before the river. And then we have the good sidings, which is obviously this area here, which hasn't been laid yet. Uh, I've done these all as if you were facing them. Uh, pretty much. So this 
is obviously as if we were looking this way on with the main lens here. The good sidings are perfect for sitting here because that's how I'll be facing them. The good sidings are here, the diagram will work perfectly. And the branch line, sort of backwards from sitting over here, but if I were to walk around there and look at it, that's what it would look like. You'll notice here as well, I've also got uh, on-off switches for the CDU and 12 volts. Obviously I've got a 12 volt bus ring going around the layout uh, to wire anything 12 volts into. And I'll have the ground of the CDU um, as well. So what I was thinking of doing is having the capacitor discharge unit being able to be turned on and off as well as the 12 volts on their own dedicated switches. Then on the rest of the panel, we'll just have the switches for the points. Now what I'll be using for switches, um, I bought them all from CPC. So for the points, we've got momentary on, off, on switches that are sprung. Um, they've got, they don't have a part number on them, but they're just the standard micro on, off, on sprung switches that lots of people use. And then I've also purchased two of these. Uh, they were just the cheapest on off switches. And I didn't read the dimensions, but I'm quite happy with them. They're rated for up to uh, 10 amps at 125 volts or 10 amps, 250 volts. So yeah, they're quite high rated. I'll just be using them for 12 volts and 16 volts. Makes no difference. They're really nice, really big on off toggle switches with a really satisfying click. So that's what will be going here and here. Now I may uh, end up putting more switches and LEDs and all that sort of jazz on the, on the control panels as I see fit. But for the moment, I just want them nice and simple and looking really good. Um, the other panel is exactly the same size. It's just got different graphics. And that's the fiddle yard. So obviously two coach sidings and two good sidings. Um, may not, not necessarily always just be wagons and coaches. I can have DMUs, EMUs, uh, locos sat in there as well. So this is a DCC layout, so anything can be anywhere. And then to connect them all, what I'll be using is I've got obviously the, if I just reach over and grab them, all the wires I'll be using from to form a droppers around the layout. I can use those in the control panel. And then connecting them up, I've got standard chocolate blocks. I thought it'd be good to have wires separate in the control panel and the rest of the layout, just because it makes it a lot easier. Because if you have um, a wire that's coming from, say, a point motor or two wires from a point motor, and they're soldered directly to the switch, it works. Then what happens if you need to remove the point motor? You've got to cut that wire or you've got to resolder that wire. With these, all you do is unscrew them. I have in the past used plugs, uh, like computer connectors, so the control panels are completely removable. I don't really see the need for that, because in the past, I never removed them. I spent hours, uh, and I mean hours, soldering a 24-pin computer connector to have my control panel completely removable, and it uh, never got removed. Uh, now, powering this, I've got myself uh, just a random 12 volt adapter. For the points, I don't know what transformer I'm using at the moment as I'm struggling to fire my old 16 volt AC transformers. Uh, I'm just looking into what other transformers I can possibly use to power. Just reach over and grab it. The capacitor discharge unit. So I've had these in the past as well. There's loads of different brands, but I've always liked Gage Master capacitor discharge units, nice and beefy capacitors. They never really go wrong. Right, so we've got all of this. Uh, we've got to create some sort of box to put it in. What I've found is these old bits of wardrobe that were in the cellar. So they're relatively decent wood, quite solid. And this is actually probably, I haven't measured it, probably about four mil ply. I don't have any spare plywood that would suit. Uh, the only spare ply I've got is obviously 9 mil from the baseboards. And the switches won't quite make it through that. And instead of buying some plywood, 
as I obviously can't go to, to any shops, I'd have to do an online order. And I don't think £10 is worth it for delivery. Got this old bit of wardrobe here. If I uh, give it a clean and cut it up into bits, I think it should work quite nicely to form the control panels. Okay, so I didn't uh, manage to get the wood for the frames out of the wardrobe stuff, but I did get the uh, four mil ply. Uh, and I ended up ripping down some old planks. And I've just sanded them. They've got one dirty side and one clean side. I'll put the dirty side on the inside. It's smooth, I've sanded it, but it's still quite dirty. I might try different varnishes or something uh, on them, but they're all the same size pretty much. Ripped them down with a circular saw. So all I've got to do is create a box and that will form the basis of my control panels. So I've got the boxes made up. I've just screwed the battens to the plywood as at the moment I didn't have correct length screws, uh, nice screws that is, to screw to the sides. I tried with one of my brass screws and it isn't quite long enough to get through. Uh, this slightly messier board in the fiddle yard where no one can see it. And this one is very, very slightly cleaner. Um, it'll be the main one. Obviously this line across it doesn't matter as it'll have a sheet on. Obviously that's the wrong one. That goes on there. Now I just need to fix these laminated trap planes down. I'm just going to use some double-sided tape. Uh, and then I will be mounting all of the screws. All you have to do is drill a hole, then they all come with nuts and washers and whatever. So I will be mounting all of the switches and the uh, trap lens. And then we will get on to how I'm going to wire them up. Okay, so I've got all the switches screwed in. And I think they look quite good, to be fair. Um, my two massive on-off switches at the end here and all the different point motors switches these are obviously sprung on-off switches if we move around to the back though completely empty so to start rectifying that what I'm going to do is put the chocolate blocks in and then start wiring all the switches and stuff to the chocolate blocks. And then I've also got to find room in here for the capacitor discharge unit. I can probably see it around there. And I'll get everything wired in and up to the chocolate blocks. And then the two control panels will be ready to install on the layout. Hi guys, it's getting towards the end of the evening. Uh, I've got the fire on and I'm just wiring up the control panel. I thought I'd just show you how I'm wiring it. Um, it's not how I've done it in the past. In the past, I have done commons between the switches like this, but I've always cut individual bits of wires and looped it. I thought I'd just be different this time. I'm just melting the insulation with the soldering iron and then putting a bit of solder on. So it's a one continuous wire going between all the commons of all the switches. Uh, you can see there I wired up the capacitor discharge unit. It's just on a bit of nymal ply so the screws holding it down don't poke through the control panel. You can see these little bits here, uh, but nothing too major. Uh, that's that. I'm uh, going to continue wiring up the rest of the switches. Uh, I still need to do all of that panel, but I think that'll be a job for tomorrow morning. I'll get this one finished tonight. Do that tomorrow. This <laughs> is quarter ten. Okay, guys, so it's the next morning. All the switches are screwed in. And they've all got <clears throat> their wires going to the chocolate blocks. And you can see it's quite firmly mounted here. Now we've got this bracket here on one side and a hinge on the other. Uh, that might seem like a weird mounting combination. Why not use two brackets uh, or something like that? But what it actually means is if I just get a screwdriver, it doesn't have to be an electric one. It could just be a normal one. If I get a screwdriver, it just swings open. Then I can get to 
uh, all of the chocolate blocks. I'll just show you the way it's wired. So I've labeled all the chocolate blocks. We've got 12 volts in, uh, whatever's going to the CDU in, haven't decided yet. Um, 12 volts out, CDU out. So that's all my sort of power in and outs here. And then we've got points, we've got one through to six. So the 12 volts in, comes in, goes through a switch, uh, goes out. The CDU comes in, goes through a switch, into the capacitor discharge unit, out of it, and then out here. Then all of the points are just um, the two wires coming off the back of the switch, go to the two terminal blocks. You can see I'm using Ethernet cable here. Uh, not necessarily rated for the correct current draw for point motors, but um, as it's only instantaneous, it's just a flash of voltage. Um, I've never ever had them burn out. Uh, obviously, if there was some sort of error and you had a point motor uh, going for a long time, the wires might burn out, but at the same time, so the point motor. So there's no real point in having massive gauge wires on there when I know these work. Uh, if they ever stop working, easy enough to change it all. Um, but I've used Ethernet in the past and it's a really cheap way to get loads of uh, twisted pairs of wires uh, really fast, really cheap. I've got that 100 meter roll of Cat5 for 12 pounds on eBay. So I'm never gonna run out really. Um, so yeah, the power, the positive, comes from the CDU to the center of all the switches. Now if I switch a switch one way, <clears throat> it'll go through one wire. <clears throat> and if I switch a switch the other way, it'll go through another wire. Um, you can see here on the capacitor discharge unit, I got both the positive and the negative out. The negative goes to the green bus wire that's going all the way around the layout, and that'll go to all of the point motors. And the positive, there's just gonna be a short uh, wire, or sort of a bus, going from here to the other control panel, which is going to be on the fiddle yard. Now, I haven't wired the other control panel yet. I've labelled it up, though, um, and I'll get it wired and get it installed uh, over on the fiddle yard in a second. All this one's got is this positive for the CDU in, which is obviously coming straight from this panel, and then all the outputs of the switches. There's two wires spare here, um, just in case I want to control anything else from here. But at the moment, it's just the points, if I get it the right way up, it's just the points for the fiddle yard. And I'm thinking, because this one's going to be mounted to the board over there, I'll just put a hinge on the back, so then I can just hinge it up like that. That's all I'll need. won't need any bracket, because obviously it doesn't have to hold itself up. Uh, I had was hoping to just have the, the one hinge on, but it springs out on that hinge. So I've had to add this little bracket that holds it flush. Uh, I might consider adding some sort of magnet in here that holds this instead of a screw. Uh, my only issue with that would be getting it to line up so it's flush with uh, level with the top of the board. But at the moment, also I've drawn around it so I know exactly where that goes and I just put the screw in that screw hole. Uh, Again, this is just uh, temporary, this drawer and stuff. There's going to be a nice sheet of ply that's fascia, so you won't see any of the screws and the ends of the wood or whatever. It'll look quite nice, be painted black. Uh, and I'll have the finished solution, possibly a magnet, possibly I'll keep with this bracket, I'm not sure. Right, so I'm just going to do the other panel. It's going to be pretty much the same as this, but obviously only the green wire and all the ethernets. Uh, I'll get that one installed and screwed down over there. And then we can move on to starting to install all the seep point motors. You can see I've got a massive pile of them there, uh, ready to go on the layout. Okay guys, so the next step for me is putting in all my seep motors. So I've made sort of a jig, I've just drilled a hole uh, in the fiddle yard area. I don't really mind if I get this covered in solder spots and that burn mark. Uh, um, because it's all non-scenic, this will be sort of a work working area in the future. I can sit down here and, and do locos or whatever, so I don't really care what it looks like. Uh, all I've done is solder on 
some wires. I've got a standard length of about 20 centimeters for my droppers. So we've got the positive and negative for track. The green is the points common. Then the two ethernet wires. Obviously the ethernet wires are gonna vary in length depending how far away from the control panel they are. Um, but I've just soldered on ones. This point's going here, so this should be more than long enough to reach this control panel. Uh, obviously for the track positive and negative, you need to look for each motor which way round it's going to be. Uh, and quite simply, think of it, there's a lot of wires, but think of it as two different things. There's three wires for the point motor, so there's a common, and a left and a right. And that means when you move the switch, the point will move. Then there's three wires on a single pole double throw switch, which means effectively the point motor turns that between positive and negative. Now, which way round you wire those depends on every point. Uh, for example, I know when this point is this way, this needs to be positive to match the positive and negative rails. But when it throws this way, this bit suddenly becomes negative because we've got the positive and negative rails. So this whole section has got to be negative. And that's the whole point of the electrofrog wiring. So what I'm going to do now is experiment with a few different ways. Um, I'm going to try to begin with double-sided tape to get it positioned. And then I'll be putting two screws up through the baseboard to hold it in firmly once I know it's positioned. And I'll try wiring it up and see if I get it all working. And then it's just a case of doing exactly the same thing over and over again for the entire fiddle yard. Then working my way around the layout, doing the rest of the points. So, okay guys, so I've got the first point motor installed. The frog isn't wired up yet, uh, just because I want to do at least two of them at the same time, uh, just to neaten up the wiring by not having loads of these connectors all uh, next to each other. It took me quite a while to position it, um, but it works really well now. Um, obviously the capacitor discharge unit makes it just snap. Uh, what I ended up doing is putting paper um, I'll do it to this one, try and do it one ended. You just sort of wedge, there we are, uh, wedge it in the middle, and then you can put the point motor underneath, put the bar in the middle, and then I attached it with a little bit of double-sided tape, just two tiny bits, um, then got it positioned, and with the double-sided tape, you can keep taking it off and putting it back on, and it will hold it just enough that you can give it a test or hold on to it from underneath and give it a test. Um, and then all you have to do is put the screws in after that. Okay guys, it's been um, one day I think since I last filmed. I just got this point motor installed. And now I've got all the point motors in, in the fiddle yard plus the curved point round there. I'll do a clip later on to show you my new method. Um, I've since found mounting them on nine mil ply uh, helps with the alignment because it means you have to be less precise with the alignment because if it's further away from the baseboard there's more wire so it can flex more it just reduces stress on the motor and also it stops these ugly screw holes uh, through the baseboard there's some here as well uh, from before I started using the line apply as you can see the rest of the points don't have the screw holes um, I've given these all a rigorous test and most of them are working uh, pretty well um, I still haven't given the Weston's wheels a clean, so that could account for some issues, but I'm having a couple of issues in some places. Uh, I think I might, I'll either got loose wiring or dirty track or dirty wheels, helps you go the right direction. Um, as it sometimes stutters going over these frogs here, now all the frogs should be live, they're all wired into the point motors. You can see it stops here, and then keeps going again. But it's working well over most of the points. It, again, it's just this area here I need to find. There must be a loose wire or something. Um, another little issue I've had with some of the points. I'll just stop the western before she goes mental. I've had an issue with some of the points. All the ones that are wired in individually, if you look at these two points here, work perfectly first time as they should. But where I've got two points joined together, 
uh, they don't quite go all the way across. You need a sort of second pulse that pushes it all the way across. You can see it more with... There we are. Just need a second pulse to push it all the way across. Now I know that two point motors obviously takes more current than one, so that, that explains that. Um, but over there, what I don't understand is on that crossover, I've tried everything with alignment, um, taking them both in and out and in and out and tried everything to align them carefully. But it takes, in one direction, takes two or three pulses. That's what I'd expect for uh, my current power supply. I don't think it's quite powerful enough. Um, so it takes about two pulses, the same as this one. In the other direction, so that's two. It's barely moved. That's five, and it's all the way across now. And the points right next to it, you won't be able to see this, but they work perfectly. So I had originally thought it was some sort of voltage drop in the small wire. Obviously, I'm only using Ethernet which has never gone wrong for me in the past, using this twisted pair of Ethernet wires. Uh, this runs from the control panel to the point motor. For both of them, they don't share an Ethernet pair. They've got a pair each to each motor, and they're joined in the control panel. So I can't see what the issue is, really. Um, I've got a similar problem with the curved point, which is the next point I've wired in, is that wire goes all the way from this control panel all the way around to over there. So it could be a voltage drop thing, or it could be something else. What I'm gonna try first is buying a analog controller, because I know their 16 volt outputs work very well to power capacitor discharge units. Um, at the moment I'm running it, as I said, off a 16 volt DC uh, power supply. And I've tried reading the current off of it and I don't think it's giving out very much current at all. So I'm gonna try a different power supply. If that doesn't solve it, I'll have to try a different wire. And I think to save buying new wire, I might just try doubling up all the ethernet on all the troublesome points. If that doesn't work, I'll end up buying a load of new wire. Happy to say though, just before I end this video, this point's now throwing a lot better. I found the problem with it is I'd been removing the springs and I'd left the bits of metal, the little metal hooks. There's metal hooks that hold down the fake bit of sleeper where the spring is. I'd left them a little bit proud and the point was rubbing on them. So now without that, it throws much, much better than it did before. Uh, still doesn't throw perfectly. Now I'm more inclined to believe it's a low current on the power supply that is the problem. It's 16 volt DC, which shouldn't be a problem. DC or AC should work fine, but I think it's not producing much current at all. Um, so I will be ordering a different power supply. Right guys, I'll leave you there. The uh, last bit of a tip at the moment, excuse where I had my lunch. Um, a little bit of a tip, but I've got most of the point motors in, the rest will be going in this afternoon. My next video will almost definitely be um, either ExpressNet or a layout update. And I have many more plans for the future. Thanks for watching. This is just sort of an overview of my uh, installing point motors and installing control panels and how I make my control panels. Thanks for watching.